Yes, sir. Welcome back to Talking Nets on a late Sunday night. After the Nets shocked the world again? Two times in one week? Is this real life? This is real life. This is Keith McPherson. This is Hudson Flynn coming to you after the Nets beat the Clippers and they beat them the whole game. Um, say what you want about players not playing. We know Pat Beverly didn't play. We know Paul George didn't play. Uh, Trez didn't play. A couple guys didn't play, but at the same time, Kevin the- Durant didn't play. Kyrie Irving didn't play. <laughs> We're going to talk about DMPs. <laughs> the Nets have uh, 10 players on the DMP list. But we're going to talk about both of these games that happened this weekend, Friday night and then Sunday night, um, because that's what we're doing. Two games per pod, reaction pods, just straight reactions, what we thought, what we saw. Let's go to the Kings game Friday night at 5, much earlier than this, four hours earlier than this. Uh, I I took the Nets to cover. I forget what the spread was, but I think the Nets were favored like five. I definitely took the Nets to cover, and they did. I had no thought in my mind that the Nets were going to lose. I've seen the Kings play a little bit out here. They're not going to – I can't say they're not going to get in. I don't think they're mathematically out yet. I know the Pelicans are out, but either way – The Pelicans are out tonight. Kings are are close. Kings are playing real bad. Either way, they're on their way out. So going into this game – I wasn't worried about the Nets showing up. It was a, a game we had to bounce back. Obviously, the uh, the Celtics game was rough. Um, <laughs> Celtics waxed us. Oh, my God. Yeah. I, I think you, we needed that. You got to lose to know how to win. Sometimes you got to get humbled like that to really, like, lock in and listen to what Coach Jacques Vaughn is saying and come in with the game plan to not get beat, man. <sighs> Going into the Kings game um, – what did you think about the Nets? Did you think they were going to fold? Do you think they were going to like play a close game with the Kings? Or did you think they were going to respond? No, I knew they were going to respond. Nets always play a good game against the Kings, even going back to last year when we, uh, when we beat the Kings in that great, that D'Lo's great game, the Classic. game that D'Lo stands are still talking about. But no, I, I knew they were going to play well. I knew they were going to put it together. The Kings are an injured team. They're just not a very good team. And uh, I'm glad that the Nets had them after getting waxed by the Celtics because I don't think if the Nets don't play that game and play that game well the Nets don't come into this game with the same confidence level that they did and so I'm really glad about it but we got more to be glad about we made an appearance we were down there (laughs) would you look at that talking Nets in the stands the virtual seats I was literally looking at my phone the whole time so I barely like so myself, I was trying to find myself. That was my tip on uh, on Twitter. I'm like, if you get in the virtual seats, don't try and watch the game on your phone. Stare into the screen, or you're gonna be looking down the whole time. Uh, that was cool, man. Um, shout out to the Brooklyn Nets, BSE Global, obviously the Yes Network for putting us in Orlando, putting us in the stream. I had a party that night. I had a a family party thrown for me, an engagement party. Shout out to me, I guess. But before the party started at six. I'm I'm in there in the virtual fan seat. Like, yo, I'm not passing up this opportunity to be on the Nets game, like physically be in the virtual fan seats. It's history, man. How did you uh how'd you feel following it the was, protocols and getting in the virtual fan seat? It was cool. It was fun stuff. We were in there with our guy Doug Barak. Love him. He did he did a lot of good work getting a lot of those screenshots of us. Shout out to him, yo. He's the man. He definitely like sent us some some good flicks. And he had been in the seats before, so he was kind of like sharing his insight. We were rookie ball. This was our first game. Um, shout out to Doug and Wingspan Wingspan Podcast. Both of us have been a guest on the Wingspan Podcast. So check that out when you get a chance. Nets fans, Nets Twitter. But man, that was just a fun time. Nothing else to say other than that. I mean, it was cool to be in there. It's cool to see ourselves on the broadcast. It's cool to be a part of history, to be a part of something that hopefully never happens again. And it was I mean, interesting. The Nets were the Nets were all over it. They handled it well. It was all very regimented. People were in there an hour ahead of time, just making sure that everyone understood that they were going to be on TV. They were yelling at people for slouching. They kept yelling at one <laughs> one seat, seat thirty one. C31 kept slouching, and the the, Net, the Brooklyn Nets were not having it. Yeah, because if you slouch in the virtual seat, you end up blocking someone else's seat or being over. I was sitting next to Michael Ray Robinson. When they did the cut to Michael Ray Robinson, I was to his left. 
I like leaned in on him and you could see my face for <laughs> a second. The, that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I was like, yo. <laughs> they do the close up on him and you see Keith go, hey. <laughs> like, yo, I'm in this section too. So, man, that's cool. That's very 2020. I was saying to like, you know, my fam and people that are around me, I'm like, yo, that's so 2020. You don't even realize like we are in the future. We're watching uh, the Nets game in Orlando. Like we're, we're being beamed in through a Microsoft Zoom uh I don't know. It's dope. If someone would have told me that 20 years ago, I would have been like, what? You wouldn't understand. But here we are in bubble world. Um, Kings game, I would say everything for the most part went the way that we expected it to go. The, the Nets more than covered. We won that game 119-106. Our leading scorers were back. You know, it was like, okay, reactivate uh, Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, and Joe Harris to put the points back up. We, we obviously missed them in uh, – in the Bucks game, they all rested, and then we got washed in the Celtics game. But two games before that, those are the guys that were leading the way for us. And it's good to see, like, okay, these guys playing with some of the other guys, some of the backup guys, some of the new guys that are on the team. Yeah, and let's talk about Jared Allen for a sec. 17 points, 11 rebounds, and 8 assists. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. playing point guard. Mm -hmm. He almost came in with that triple double. He was close. Give it to him. Give it to him. Couple assists away for it. Give, give it to him. That's I, a in my head, I give it, give it triple to him. double. I give it to him. Jared Allen, man. I like the way the guy has been bullying. He's been playing. He's been even played tough against Zubox. He had the he had the big bubble block tonight. The we'll, big we'll old bubble there. block. <laughs> Iron Eagle is the goat. Oh my God, that man. We gotta just we, we gotta just jump ahead into that game. But uh, last couple of things I'll say about this first game and kind of good segue into the next game. Like you said, yo, we gotta give Garrett Temple some love. GT, like he is being a veteran leader. He's shooting when he's got his shots. He had 12 points in the Kings game. I'm not sure how much he had in the Clippers game, but I'll pull that box 19 up points. We'll get it. We'll second. get there, though. We'll get there, though. Yeah, so shout out to GT. Shout out to GT as well for uh, his effort Friday night against the Sacramento Queens, as Shaq and Kobe would call them <laughs> back in the day. Anything else from the Kings matchup? No, nah, nothing going on. Although the one, one thing I will say, though, about the Kings, and I'll give this out to, uh, to Talking Kings, and we actually segue – I didn't know there was an actual podcast called Talking Blazers. That's nah, like the that's either. like the the official podcast of their like TV <laughs> network, and I think that's whack. I think I think they're stepping on our toes. But no, there's wondering. definitely going to be a time where John Boy Media just acquires all the talking franchises. We'll just cut a deal with them. Like, listen, you got to join us. We've got every other team <laughs> under the talking umbrella. Like, that's our thing. I was watching them play today, and that popped up. I was like, wait a minute. Wait I mean, they minute. have a talking Cowboys, like, connected with the actual Dallas Cowboys. I've, I've already done some things tapping on them. We'll see one day <laughs> if that actually materializes. But, uh, yeah. So much for that first game Friday night. It was a great night for us being in the Orlando bubble digitally and watching the Nets win. And, uh, you know, it's, it, there's something different going on. It's like a different energy, different vibe with this team. I, I love the dynamic they're building with Jacques Vaughn. I tweeted out, like, they're giving me, like, March Madness vibes. Like, the bubble itself is giving me March Madness vibes. But the Brooklyn Nets are becoming this, like, story, like, shock the world. They shocked the world against the Bucks. They hold it down against Sacramento, and then they play the Clippers tonight. That spread, 15-point spread, they cover that, beat the Clippers, and now people are looking like, yo, okay, they just clinched the seventh seed. Maybe they can rumble with the defending champs. I don't know. That's what people are saying. That's what Twitter be saying. That's, that's right, not me. People are saying I'm gonna say, Nets and four. I'm going to hold, hold my Ws and talk about uh, the last podcast we did before the bubble when I said, this Nets team gave me heavy Loyola Chicago vibes. And we gotta find that. We gotta to we gotta find that and clip that. They're still giving it to me. We got that's that's gonna be our homework after this episode. We're gonna find that. We're gonna clip that, and I'm gonna hold my wins because this team is doing that. They're they're that Cinderella story. Them and the Phoenix Suns. Got to give the Phoenix Suns a lot of credit. Obviously, they're playing with their full complement of stars, but An they're under the yeah. bubble, and they're looking like Brooklyn Nets West right now, and I like it. I love the Suns undefeated. Devin Booker, uh, Aiton is really coming on. And they're doing like Cam Johnson. They're doing it every night. And they're just surprising some people. And really, you, like, you shouldn't be too surprised. Like, we know who these guys are on this team. We've seen they started off hot this season. They cooled off, 
had a couple of different guys play whatever, but like young guys like that, they're a young team. They got energy, man. They got fresh legs from sitting at home for three, four months. Like it's, it's interesting to see, yo, there's a lot of trouble in the bubble. Uh, this podcast will come out Monday and then Jimmy buckets and TJ Warren will face off like the dramatics and the storylines are, they're building the NBA is crushing it. Uh, we talked on talking sports about Dame Lillard and like Dame Lillard dropped 51 today. But then yesterday it, he was all on Instagram going back and forth with Pat Bev and PG after missing his free throws. And like just the level of pettiness that exists between players creates this drama and makes the NBA that more like entertaining to watch than anything else. And here's what I'm saying. We're missing the, um, the post game interviews right now. The we're recording right after the game finished. Keith re- literally sent out, we joined right as the game ended, but I'm expecting to hear some, some stories. And we heard about Garrett Temple talking up with the Rockets about how to beat the Bucks. I don't know if, if I'm Damian Lillard, and he's got a lot of beef with this Clippers team. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'm just sliding it into, into Garrett Temple's DMs, telling him, hey, yo, this is the formula. This is what you got to do. But whatever he said, whatever happened, it worked. And let's, yeah, take it, yeah. let's take it quarter by quarter. Let's get into it. Because this first quarter was insane. Mm-hmm. This was the second highest scoring <laughs> first quarter in Nets history. Breaking the records? The, 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 wait, hold on. There was a record. Right, I think they hold a record now. We shot like eighty-six percent, highest shooting percentage in a quarter in NBA history. Bro, we're we're causing that kind of trouble in the bubble. The Nets shot out of their minds. I I, it was too good to be true. I was like, this this can't really keep going. And like they were not missing. It was insane. They were just draining it from three. And I sent out a tweet. I said I said that shooting eighty-six percent is not sustainable, and it wasn't. But we only cooled off to 60% in the second quarter, and we kept <laughs> it running. Hot. We brought a, a, a sizable double-digit lead into that into halftime, and I was feeling good, but I was, I was worried because they went on a little run going into the end of that first half. They cut it down from 20 to 12, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, okay, this is going to be a game. This is going to be a game. And then Kawhi Leonard uh, did Kawhi Leonard things to start the second half, and I was like, well, shit, that was fun. That was a fun first half. Bro, he's ridiculous. He, he's a robot. When we went – so I'm watching the game, and I'm like, okay, we got to have at least a 10-point lead going in half. I'm like, after all of this shooting, after, like, Tyler Johnson is hitting threes, Chris Chioza is hitting threes, Karras, like, <laughs> Joey Harris, headband, headband Joey. I'm like, these guys are going nuts. They're going out of their minds. Okay, 11 points is nothing because as soon as we open up the second half, Kawhi's like, doop, doop, erase. He went off on his own. And I think Ian Eagle even pointed out, he went on a 15-0 and run if you go back into the second personal quarter. Run. It was him. It was himself, the one-man wrecking crew. <laughs> the, 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 king, on. the king of load management did not thought, get his load dude, managed. I thought he was trying to score as many points as he could before they sat him, but they didn't sit him. So don't give me any excuses out there, you probably Knicks fans or NBA fans that are haters on the Nets to be like, oh, well. They didn't play anybody else. No, Kawhi played the whole game like, and took this L. Oh, and, <laughs> and people who say that are such clowns. I, it's just so, it's so easy with those people. And they're all up in my Twitter mentions. They're all up in talking Nets Twitter mentions. Like, Let them be. <laughs> AD didn't play. Kyrie didn't play. That's what I'm saying. Well Wilson done. Chandler didn't play. Like, this, this is looking like trouble in the bubble. I'm thinking what to, what to name this, this pod. And it's definitely about us, you know, being underdogs being being underdogs and actually like covering and beating the team again and causing trouble in the bubble the whole nba should be afraid the whole nba should be on alert that these g league long island nets and scrappy motley crew of players that we assembled are stepping to the big dogs like Giannis and Kawhi and coming out on top i don't care i know people are going to say oh they're they're getting ready for the playoffs all these planned games or, or these these seeded games don't matter. No, they do matter. This is NBA competition. These guys don't go out there trying to get their ass kicked. No, tell me it doesn't matter after you watch all that that Instagram beef. All in those people way, in each it's other's personal. Mentions. Like like Jordan, and and then it became personal to me. Yeah, it's personal every night. <laughs> oh, and shout out Noah Eagle. 
<laughs> he dropped that gif on one of our uh, one of our tweets because <laughs> he's, he's, great. The, he's the Clippers radio announcer and we had Ian Eagle on the call so it was a family matter yes network pointed out they had a great little duo interview and that was great stuff and man Ian Eagle he he killed it on the call he killed of it on the course. call Jared Allen had that big old bubble block the cheddar when uh when chioza had the and one circus shot and he's like that was cheddar (laughs) (laughs) he kills it man uh the eagles are great uh apple don't fall far from the tree at all shout out to noah interacts with us on twitter and he's doing his thing for the clippers but tonight he had to call an l who else joey harris someone asked me on on twitter and they're like did joey harris play like this under kenny i'm like yeah he definitely had nights where he went off under kenny and this it was a, a Knicks fan, this girl that's a Yankee Twitter person. I don't know if she listens to talking that's probably not. But she's like, Yeah, I didn't know he had that in his game. I'm like, Yeah, he's not just a shooter, he's fundamental, Joe. We've seen him break people down. We've seen him smoothly get to the hoop when he has to. He's not always just on the wing waiting like Joey he's Harris, Joey Broadway bucket. Joe. He's, what he's I, what do I say bucket. about Broadway Joe? He's ready for the bright lights. It's the last game of the night, Sunday night. West Coast team starts at six o'clock for them. Everybody was watching. Hey, headband Joey went off, did his thing. And he showed out 25 points, five of eight from deep. He did foul out on the end on a, I would say, a questionable foul call, but it didn't matter because we had support. And just like I said earlier, we got to talk about Garrett Temple. We got to talk about Prez. Yep. He put up 19 points, four of 11 from three. And right after that Kawhi Leonard run, he hit back-to-back threes yep. that, in my mind, secured us that win. That got us that win because we could have folded right there. I mean, the Clippers were rolling. And Garrett Temple hits back-to-back threes, one out of the timeout on the top of the key, and then one in the corner. And he calmed all the nets down. And he showed that veteran presence. But he showed that he's not just a veteran presence. He can score, and he did. And it was just some great looks from him. And I think his presence and his scoring ability is really a big part of why the Nets are playing so good. And I think he deserves more credit than he's getting. Absolutely. Shit, he'll get it right here. GTGT took him to Temple on a Sunday night. Blessed him. Back to back. Coming out of the timeout when we needed it. Because that momentum swung, obviously. And that's why I say he's got that veteran leadership. He's like, no, like, okay, we took a punch. Now we punch back. Boom, boom. There's six points quickly. Go to another break. Garrett Temple, he's finding his shot. He's... He's making things happen, and like I said, that leadership is needed. I'm not sure how old he is, but he's clearly like the veteran on this team. He's clearly – he's probably a few years older than the next older, oldest guy on this team. Yeah, I believe he's 34 off the top of my head, but I'm going to cut in here because Brooklyn Nets PR is just going to work with all these records that they're breaking. We just, I just got this on my Twitter right now. The Brooklyn Nets are now the only NBA team left that has had a lead in every game this season. The Clippers were the other one, but they trailed end-to-end, wire-to-wire. The Nets started hot and never looked back. And now the Nets, a team that no one talks about, no one cares, you know, a team with a losing record. But we've been in games. We've been in all these games with this current roster that we have. And, you know, that's just one way to show it. And, you know, I can tell you why and so many reasons. I can go into the analytics. We can go into the film. We can go all Matt Brooks on it. But what we, what we got to do is we just got to say, we got some players on this team that can ball. And Karras, I know we talk about him every podcast. But he's that's on like, that level. He's just, I mean, that's like saying that people talk about Michael Jordan every day. He is on another level right now. 27 points, four rebounds, 13 assists. They couldn't check him. Career high. They tried to check him. I sent out a tweet. Tyron Lue was, was, gave him the, the order just to run after Karras. It was late in the game. <laughs> they sent a double, and they literally just had two guys running after Karras. Karras, oh, easy, drops the dime to Jarrett, easy points all day. He, he's just on another level. And I've reached the point where if Sean Marks decides to trade Karras, if there's some bad stuff that happens and Karras not, doesn't end up on this team, no way. I'm going to be big rattled. That K- shouldn't be even close to KD. a conversation anymore. KD, I forget what podcast it was, and, and KD spoke about Karras, but KD is making sure he doesn't go anywhere. And it's interesting. You're watching him control the ball. You're watching him play point guard. You're watching him create. Like, even when they – like I'm saying, they couldn't check him. Even when they stop him coming down the lane, he's like, boop, boop, I got this. Even when, like, you think he's cut off, he's finding Jared Allen. Or he's stopping at the top of the key, just 
hitting shots, hitting threes. And I'm looking at Karis LeVert, like this dude is a star and like he's giving them buckets and he can do this with KD. He can do this with whoever. Um, obviously with different guys on the court with Joe Harris too, that's another thing. Like not having to defer to a Spencer Dinwiddie, not having to defer to a Kyrie, not having to defer to eventually a KD. Like it changes stuff. Um, I love what we're seeing out of these guys. It's good to know that they got it, man. I think we pay Karis. I think we pay Headband Harris. I think we keep Jared Allen, all that trade talk stuff. No, look at how these guys are playing. Yes, this is raising their value. Yes, they're putting the whole league on notice. But who do we want? Like, nah, I think you just add the whole other team that we have to this team, and they're going to be unstoppable. They're going to run through the East. Yeah, it's – I mean, it's insane. And we're talking about Karis LeVert, and I mentioned Michael Jordan. I see a lot of Jordan's game in Karis. And, you know, another player I see a lot of it in is Kawhi Leonard. And you saw them go head-to-head today. They had a lot of that mid-range game working. And Karis from the mid-range is like a revelation. A lot of people are saying, you know, Kenny did this. Kenny didn't do that. This is one change that I have seen from Jacques Vaughn to Kenny. Jacques Vaughn is giving Karis the go-ahead to work in that mid-range. And now I know people say the mid-range shot is dead, whatever. It's a low percentage shot. It's not a low percentage shot for Karis. Right. I swear he hits it every time he takes it. And he just hits people with that little shimmy, with that little high post move. And it works every time. And let's talk about Jacques Vaughn because – he is the Nets head coach. Hey, that sounds good to that's me. That's it, right? That's, like, that's just it. I don't I mean, know what else the guy's got to prove. If, yeah, if, right? if, if people were saying he had to go win a couple games in the bubble, bubble to prove himself, like before the bubble, he beat LeBron. In the bubble, he beat Giannis and Kawhi. What those more are, can he do, right? Those are like the top three players in the NBA in a lot of people's opinion right now. Okay. Oh, so Jacques so, Vaughn took yeah. a, a group of G League players – a, a, a group of guys that were on the streets, essentially. A lot of these guys were literally, like, could have been picked up by other teams and were not. And he's winning games. He's not just winning games. He's winning games that, like, he's the underdog by 15 points, 18 points. Like, that's that means no one believes in you. And he's putting together game plans. He's motivating these guys. He's talking to these guys in ways that are getting them to play above their heads. And if you can get them to play above their heads now and you add – the superstar talent that we have to this type of mentality. Like, no, I, I'm, I don't know. It, it was tough for me to lose Kenny this year. If they go away from John Vaughn, this is going to be trouble in the bubble. It's going to be trouble in the bubble. I don't think it's going to happen. I think he's done enough. Uh, Yeah. I mean, there can't be really anything more that he's got to do. He beats the three best players in the NBA and he's just making do on the quickest reclamation projects I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, everyone talks about, you know, how great of a developer Kenny was, and he is, he still is, he's out there, he's going to get a job, he's going to be a great coach for the rest of his career, he's a young guy, but he, you know, Jacques Vaughn is reclaiming these players out of nowhere, talk about Tyler Johnson, Sean Marks wanted him a couple of years ago, spent 50 mil on him, the heat matched the offer, now he's back on the streets, we pick him up, clutch, yeah. 21 points, five and nine from deep and he hits the deepest rainbow three to seal that game. And I'm watching these players play and I'm thinking, why didn't anyone else have them on their teams? Why aren't these players coming off the bench to play it, with man. LeBron? Why, why'd they sign J.R. Smith it's when they turning in, these other players? It's turning into, cause like, I don't think it's fool's gold. I think we can believe this now it's turning into almost like the Yankees with the Cashman effect, finding these diamond in the roughs, finding these guys that no one else wanted. Like Chris Chioza is hitting threes out here. Today was the, Ch- the Tyler Johnson game. Let's stay on him. Sean Marks gets a lot of credit for this kid coming out and playing the way he did. I think he might have heard me. I know he doesn't listen to talking. That's maybe someone text him because I said, this guy's not going to score. I'm like, he must be out there for defense and stuff because he's not showing me that he can score the ball. He put up his 20 plus tonight and he was hitting, he was hitting shots where I was like, yo, he, like, he's wet, wet. Like, this kid is putting the ball straight through the – no. I mean, his release is nice. Yeah. I, I, watching him play, I knew his release was too nice for him to keep missing shots like he was. I knew it was just a matter of time until they connected. And, man, they connected. Yeah, he and felt just it. He felt connecting. it tonight. And, I like, I got to give credit to Chioza, Joe Harris, all of them. Uh, they're just, like they, – they came out and played tonight extremely well, and it was from start to finish. That urgency was there early. Uh, Karis LeVert led all scorers with 27. 
Joe Harris followed him up with 25. Um, Rody, man, Rody hit a big three late in the game when we needed it. And I was like, Rody, Rody, Rody with a dab of ranch. That was like, that was a shot. We needed that, that late because we got to, I think we got to like 151 in the game and there was like a six point lead. And I was like, ah, I don't feel safe right now. Rody hit that shot with 547 left. By the time we get down to 150 left in the game, there's a six point lead. And I'm like, someone's got to rise. And this is the Tyler Johnson game. Tyler Johnson rose to the occasion. Uh, he had a big play where he drove to the lane, drew, drew, a, a, drew a blocking, blocking foul. foul. Like, yeah. I'm like, bro, this the, Sean Marks is sitting somewhere. Like, I told you guys we we're going to need the, this kid. I told you I wanted him. I knew what his game was like. Yeah, I mean, if I got to pick a, 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 that's what I'm talking about, talking Nets player of the game for this game, Tyler Johnson. I mean, you took, you took the one. I'm taking the two. It's Garrett Temple. He deserves it. And that's no shade to Karras and his 27 points and his 13. Let me, let's just take a pause for a second. We reached a point where these bubble nets, where we're giving players of the game to too many people. We don't have enough spots. We don't have enough awards. We're going to have to turn into talking yanks with these awards. Yeah. We're going to have to <laughs> find more awards to give to these people because we just gave awards to Tyler Johnson and Garrett Temple. Well, we had someone who put up 27 points and 13 assists. Next man up. Next man what up. It's the we, same story. It's the same happening? story. Then anybody, any night can be the hero. Next man up. And any one of these guys can go off. Any one of these guys can contribute. Any one of these guys can be the player of the game. That's what I'm talking about. And, and you know what? Like, it's going to keep going like that. Exactly. <laughs> and this is the beginning of something. We are building this culture. We're rebuilding the culture of the Nets. Like the culture of the Nets that Kenny established, I guess it had to, you know, just crumble with him. And, you know, they dissembled the bench mob. I, I know we tweet, you tweeted out and we said a, a couple words for Theo. Like, damn, wish we could have Theo on the bench for this, man. That'd be great. But let's not ruin the moment. <laughs> that is out the window. This new culture that is being built with these guys like Chris Chioza, like Tyler Johnson, and even give Justin Anderson some love. Justin say, Anderson. Gotta say, like, gotta say, say Justin name. Anderson. <laughs> gotta say his name on this pod. He comes in late. He doesn't get into what? He got in like six minutes left in the in the game, or was it the third you know, quarter? No, he, he came in with about a minute left in the third quarter and then played like the majority of the start of the fourth quarter. And in my head, I was like, what's 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 going on? Like I loved, I love him. But I was like, what's going on? But he came in and he Energy. debuted with a three. And then like a backwards dive Odell type free safety move in energy. the middle of the lane. Like he's an energy guy and he's got that big energy. Bro. And I sent out a tweet. I said, you know, Clippers fans Googling who Justin Anderson is right now. Because, <laughs> UVA. I think he was boys with Joe Harris. Because that's what I'm saying. Like these teams have got to be thinking like, bro, why don't we have them? Yeah. Like, why these, they, like we could they, use a guy like that on this team. There's players. a few teams that could use a guy. Like, a lot of these guys that we have on the Nets, they're not going to make it next year, but they're showing, they're showing that they're NBA level. They're showing that they're talented now. Uh, man, I'm, I'm blown away by it. I love it. Um, even, like, TLC, right? TLC did not – he didn't have a great game today. TLC is a, is a type of guy, like, he's going to get his fouls. He's so aggressive. He runs hard. He's going to get his fouls. TLC put up three points tonight, fouled three out points, early. Three points, fouled out early. He's been the leading scorer in a couple of these wins. He's That's been... what I'm saying about this Nets team. Yeah. Like, if you look back at the leading scorers, like, okay, you look back before the Bucks game, you had a, a Jared Allen game. You had him have a big game. You had a big cream from Karras. They all get sat. Oh, okay, TLC takeover versus the Bucks. Why not? Whatever, we have a bad game against the Celtics. And then TLC, oh, he has a bad game. The rest of the team steps up for him. This is the kind of next man up mentality. You know, we're both Yankees fans. We saw this from this team last, from this Yankees team last year. You know, we got players like coming up. We got players coming up and being our Mike Talkman. We have our Tyler Johnson, Mike Talkman come up. We got all these players that are coming up that we, you know, got for cash considerations. Yeah. And they're just <laughs> balling. Shout out Gio Rochelle with the cash considerations. Yeah, Gio, what a steal, the God. But 
Yeah, it's a story that everyone can get behind. It's a story that everyone knows. Like I also, you know, we talked about the March Madness feel, the 12th seed. Like these guys could make some noise. I'm not scared of the Raptors. Yeah, let's look ahead now because we know we got the Raptors. We're the seventh seed. They're the two seed. Well, this week, yeah, let's look ahead to the games this week because these – I can't wait for these games. We got – I know we got Orlando on Tuesday, so the day after this pod comes out. Yeah, and we need to punch them in the mouth. I know that we we locked up the spot, but we need to – It doesn't matter, but we need to to let people know is that's what I'm saying. We we need to seriously let people know. And, like, I don't know what it is about the Magic. I mean, we have a little bit of history with the Magic, but, like, I hope the Nets go in and and not make it close. Like – Yo, like this is a different team. We've hit our stride now, and we're we're gonna run with it. Yeah, we got Magic on Tuesday, and then Blazers on Thursday. So that's gonna be a test for our defense for the against the Blazers. We're gonna have to come together to stop Dame. We're gonna. But have you to... you remember Dame dropped fifty on us. He dropped a fifty burger on yeah. us and lost. <laughs> he dropped a fifty a fifty on a, uh, on a, the team tonight. But uh, I mean, if we're looking ahead to that matchup, Jared Allen's playing against some big men. He's playing against some big, big men. I would like down to low. see the test because that's going to be a test. I'm excited for that test. It is beyond me, but Jared Allen been acting totally different again. Jared Allen hits free throws. I watched this what guy hit free up throws. With that, I mean, I have we have watched him his whole career brick free throws. We have watched us lose games because he brick free throws, and now he's like automatic. Good. Something yeah. happened during this quarantine pandemic, weird ass 2020 year, bro. So, <laughs> you know, everyone was talking about how Jock Vaughn was like in everybody's homes on the Zoom call 24 7, meetings every day, gave him the workout equipment. And I heard that and I kind of chalked it up. I was like, oh, that's nice. That's good. That's good for an interim coach to try and, you know, make his footholds with the players. But now I'm thinking back, I'm like, yo, what is he telling these players? Like, what is he telling Jared Allen that makes him hit free throws like this now? I don't know, but I like it, and I want it to continue, and I'm hoping he's the guy. I'm with you, bro. Uh, I know he's also kicking that Black Lives Matter stuff. He's teaching these these guys about their history. He's talking that talk. I'm like, okay, he's educating these guys. He's coaching these guys. He's making them aware of just like every, like he's he's a good coach, man. He's a team solid took guy. a day off before the uh, before the Kings game to talk about the anniversary of the uh, the Voting Rights Act. Exactly. So like you know. He's setting the right example. He's doing the right things. Uh, and I, you just made me think of something when you said the, the day off, and we'll start wrapping this up. But they showed the clip of the guys playing, like, pool football. Yeah. And playing, like, <laughs> ping pong. And, like, these, like Joe Harris. I think Joe Harris played football in, in high school. He, like, throws a nice spiral. I'm like, yo, these guys on their day off are still playing pool football. They got to chill. They got to relax. It's still Listen, it's still an AAU tournament. We said that before it even started. <laughs> we still got those vibes. You know how many times I've played pool football in these tournaments like damn that's just what it is it's like yo let's go out there and throw the rock around we're all right well man talking that's episode 46 it is late it is like quarter after 12 i gotta still edit this pod put it up but this is a reaction pod you get our fresh reaction right after a game and like i think this is the first time we've ever done two games that were wins or i mean at least it's been it's been months but like definitely two bubble wins i don't know if we've done a reaction pod in the beginning of the season or middle of the season where I'm trying to think now. Cause we, we had I mean, two we wins to every, talk about. once every two games, you know, for a while there before we all got sent home. But yeah, man, I, have to look I at mean, that. I texted you, I texted you right after the end of the first quarter. I said, this might be our winningest episode of talking nets ever. And Ooh. I'm going to say that it is because I don't remember a time where we beat a team like the Clippers. Right. So yeah. This is, so this, this trumps. Episode. Yeah. This definitely trumps any other two game reaction pods that we might have wanted in the regular season because none of that matters now completely different team new era new year 2020 this shit is wild uh shit let's wrap this thing up and to wrap this thing up first i gotta tell you my guy nets head his shirt got delivered all he did was write a review on talking nets a very nice one actually and he got a free talking Nets shirt speaking of shirts i have some ideas hudson and i've been talking i'm like wait we gotta make a shirt about these underdogs, Brooklyn against the odds, the Nets cover, the dates of these games, maybe the scores, 119 to 116. Like, we got to commemorate this bubble week that just went on from last Tuesday to Sunday. So be on the lookout for new Talking Net shirts in the shop.media, uh, johnboydmedia.com website. Also, speaking of business and shop.media, 
johnboymedia.com. You know we've partnered with DraftKings, and coming up this weekend, you can bet on the fights. The hits literally keep on coming from one MMA event to the next. They grow in excitement and anticipation, and UFC 252 is no different with two of the sport's most respected fighters stepping into the octagon this weekend. There's no better place to get in on all the action than DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. For this weekend's fight, DraftKings is offering an all-new user's opportunity to bet $1 and win $252. Those are great odds. To celebrate the weekend's huge event, DraftKings Sportsbook is offering new users the opportunity to bet $1, win $252 when placing a bet on the big fight. UFC 252, you get it? Head to the app right now. Check out all that they have to offer, including fighter props, round-by-round round betting, and so much more. Plus, with basketball's playoffs right around the corner, probably in a week, yep, NBA starts, like, the play-in games are, like, the 17th. Basketball's playoffs right around the corner. DraftKings Sportsbook is offering $10 in free bets to use in uh, in-game in action for every day of the first round of the playoffs. Plus, DraftKings Sportsbook is a safe, secure, and reliable betting app. You can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. Download the top-rated DraftKings Sports app. Use the code John Boy when you sign up. For a limited time, all new users get $1 to bet and win $252 on this weekend's main event, UFC 252. That's right. DraftKings Sportsbook is going all out for new users by offering them the chance to win $252 when placing a $1 bet on this weekend's big fight. Use code John Boy. Only a DraftKings Sportsbook must be 21 or older to enter. New Jersey only. Other terms and conditions and restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And that's how you pay the bills, folks. Make sure you leave a review so we can send you a t-shirt. Make, you, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure you follow us at Talking Nets, at John Boy Media. You can follow me at Keith McPherson. Hudson, where do they follow you? You can find me at Hudson Flynn underscore on Instagram and Twitter, but don't forget to follow the podcast, to subscribe, to rate, to review, to leave a voicemail, Keith. Yeah, you already know you got to leave the voicemail so we can get you on the pod. We put the voicemail to the mystery caller out last week. The voicemail is 201-870-0461. And that's all we got. We will see you after these next two games. But yeah, uh, we'll catch you on Nets Twitter. We'll catch you on line and uh when we see you we'll say let's go nets brooklyn